guys. We will officially begin right now. So, um, thank you everybody for joining us this morning. And this is part two in our Express Tools series. So, last week, um, same time, we went through and reviewed the two Express Tools that are included in every single license of SOLIDWORKS. Um, what's called Simulation. Express, which is a nice little lightweight FEA tool, and also Flow Express, which is our nice little lightweight CFD tool. And again, these are free in every single copy of SolidWorks. But as we found out last week, um, there are some limitations to those. Now, we'll touch on those again today, but if you guys want to learn more about those Express tools, if you might have missed last week's uh, presentation, feel free to check out our YouTube channel. Um, that presentation is up there and it's free to watch, so, so please check it out. Now, um, what we'll do today, we talked about those Express tools, and they're really, really nice, quick and dirty tools for sort of doing first pass analysis on your parts. But what if you need to go further than that? Um, real designs require real simulation, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'd like to quickly recap the Express tools and what the limitations of those tools are, and then we'll get into real SOLIDWORKS simulation and the full-blown SOLIDWORKS flow simulation as well. I'll show you guys some examples of what can be done there and uh, how it differs a little bit from the Express tools. Actually, it differs a lot. So, a recap of the Express tools. Well, we found out they're easy to use, quick, first pass analysis tools. Um, if you don't have any other simulation capabilities, they'll give you a lot of insight and, and help you kind of ballpark the results for simple parts, simple loadings. Now, um, we have the SimExpress tool, which I mentioned was our structural analysis tool, and then we have Flow Express, which is our fluid analysis tool. But these do have some drawbacks, and I'd like to talk about those. So, Simulation Express. Well, it is quick, it's fast, it's easy to use, and it's going to give you some rough information on how your design will behave. But it is limited. Um, it's only good for single parts. If you're just designing simple, sim, sim, yeah, sorry, simple metal parts, um, you can get some decent insight out of this. But it is extremely simplified. Um, you have very few restraints you can add. You have very few loads that you can add. We have very limited control over the mesh, and we have very limited control over the results. You're pretty much limited to, to safety factors, stress, and displacement. Um, now, when we talk about the Flow Express tool, it's similar. It provides some insight, but it is limited as well. So it's great for visualizing what fluid looks like moving inside a part. So see if you'll have any recirculation areas uh, where slow versus fast fluid movement areas are. And you can very quickly check your flow velocities. Um, give some great animation, some, some great insight if you don't know what fluid's doing inside your part. But the cons here are even a little bit more than in our structural tool. Um, it's only good for very simple geometry. You don't have any control over the meshing of the part. So if you have small channels, narrow areas, things like that, we really can't refine the flow in those areas. We're also very limited to boundary conditions. We can essentially set um, one pressure condition and one flow condition there, but um, we have no mesh control, um, a really limited result options, and the big drawback here is no pressure calculations included. And that's one of the most common things when we're looking at um, a fluid tool is basically what would the pressure drop or the head loss be over a system. So we'll talk today about how we've sort of seen the limitations of the SimExpress and the FlowExpress tool. We'll talk about how the real tools can really sort of overcome these challenges and, and show you what they can do design. So, let's take a quick look at what real simulation can do. Now, first of all, we can get into assembly analysis. There's lots more loads and fixtures available where you can basically just fix geometry or apply forces in Flow Simul or in uh, Sim Express. We can go in and apply lots of different loads and fixtures, and I'll show you guys some of that. We also have real mesh control capabilities. As opposed to just a slider bar and a global mesh size, we can actually control the mesh where we need to. And I'll show you guys some of the tools we have for probing results as well. So, let's take a look. I'm just going to switch over into SolidWorks and we're going to look at an assembly design, first of all. So, here is a little suspension um, AM system where we've got a shock or a damper in the middle of this. We've got some springs set up in there, and we have these multiple components that are all connected together. 
they would be connected by pins. Well, let me show you what we can do to set this up in real SOLIDWORKS simulation. So, to start with, um, multiple parts. Well, we can have all of these. We can apply different materials to all of them. They're all alloy steel in this case, but if I wanted to change one, I can easily go in and change every part to a different material if I'd like to. I can also set how these parts actually interact with each other. So we get into something called contact. And with contact, we can define whether parts are no penetration, so they actually slide and react off each other like real parts do, whether they're bonded together. We can also do things like shrink fits and virtual walls and then have things react off a plane instead of another part. Now, we also bring in the ability to add connectors. So, um, in this case, you'll see some of the connectors I have here. I have pin connectors here, here, and here. And what those pin connectors do, um, they're basically a simplified pin. I go in and tell SolarWorks which holes are involved in the pin. And what I'd like to do, I can set stiffness um, um, or lock rotation, lock translation, etc. Um, and SolarWorks will basically make this behave like a real pin. I can even go in afterwards and have it pull out the pin forces. So what's the shear and the bending moment and the axial force going through these pins? Now, we also have the ability to add other connector types. And, and let me show you some of these. Springs, pins, bolts. We actually did a whole webinar um, a couple months ago on bolt connectors. That's also on our YouTube channel. Check it out. Um, bearing connectors, weld connectors, rigid links, etc. So to simulate the spring in this damper or shock here, we've gone in and set a spring connector. We've just defined the two faces those springs will um, basically connect to, and then what the spring constant is, or the spring stiffness. So, um, finally, let's talk restraints a little bit. Well, everything we can do in Flow Express, or sorry, yeah, Sim Express is just this one tool, the fixed geometry tool, and it rigidly fixes faces for me, just like you see in that little animation. But real design um, doesn't have a lot of fixed things. Some things might be fixed, some things might need to slide. In this case, some things may need to be hinged. Every one of these holes here is actually a hinge restraint. So this is going to allow these to rotate and pivot, but not move around. So finally, we've got some forces applied on here, and I can apply multiple forces. Um, and I'll show you a little bit more, too. We were limited to just a force in Simulation Express. In full-blown simulation, I can do forces, I can do torques, I can do pressures, gravity loading, centrifugal loading, thermal expansion loading, remote loads. I can prescribe displacements if I'd like to and force things into certain deformation patterns. Um, so you can hopefully see the difference um, between kind of the SimExpress teaser tool and the full-blown simulation. This will let you simulate what you're doing with your own designs. Now, what can I get out of this? Well, let me quickly show you. Here's a quick example of this suspension and action. So we can see the links pivoting, the suspension being loaded there, and the spring is actually what's resisting the movement there. And it's basically pushing this up until it hits equilibrium with the spring force. And we can see the stress that induces everywhere in the assembly. So that's the first thing simulation is really, really good at is dealing with assemblies. But um, what about some of the other things I mentioned, like mesh controls? Let's take a quick look at those. So, I'm going to look at a simple metal part. And if you guys remember last week, we looked at a little L bracket. This is about the same level of complexity, guys. And uh, I'll quickly show you how we could go and set something like this up. Now, to start with, it's actually a full bracket here. And we're going to apply about 18,000 newtons the bracket on that little loading ring right there and fix the back face. But this is a perfect case for symmetry. If I like to basically use quarter symmetry or half symmetry on a part, I can do that in full simulation and my analysis is going to solve in half the time. Now, um, I'm going to set this study up and it'll be very quick and I'll show you some of the things we can do that we can't in full-blown simulation. So a fixed restraint. Um, that's easy to add in. We can do that in Simulation Express, but what about dealing with this symmetry? If I just ran this right now with the load on here, it's not going to behave like it were the whole part. Well, 
with my full simulation, I can go into my advanced fixtures here. And again, you'll see the different kinds, not just fixed, but rollers, hinges, elastic supports, foundation bolts, etc. I can go in and apply symmetry. It's very easy to use. I just define my symmetry cut faces there. You'll see it even previews the other half of the part for me. Then I could apply a load. And why don't we go with, oh, let's go 9,000 newtons on that pushing downwards on that face. Well, now I'll mesh it and run it. So we'll mesh it, we'll run it. Well, we get a stress result out of this. And uh, we can see it's about 163 MPA right now. Well, we don't yield till 206, so we still have a little bit of safety factor in there, but look at the jaggedness of that color plot. Anytime you see that, or if I switch to a strain plot, I'll see this. I don't have a refined enough mesh. I need more elements in that location. Those contours should be continuous and not jagged like that. So how would I do that? Well, in SimExpress, all I'd be able to do is go back in and change my mesh. I could move my mesh slider to fine, but I don't actually need a higher mesh in other areas here. I just want a higher mesh concentration right in this area and the opposite thing on the bottom right there. Well, that's what I can do in full-blown simulation. I can apply a mesh control and say, in this area, in this area, let's take the mesh size and use a smaller one. So we're about 164, 163 and a half right now. If I run this again with a finer mesh, you can see the contours smooth out a little bit. We're at about 180. Well, I can keep refining this, and what I want to do is keep changing my mesh, usually cutting it in half every time until my stress stops changing. So I can continue doing this over and over, and you'll see this time the stress is going to jump up a little bit more, and now it's at 187. looks even smoother in there. And that's what we call convergent studies on a part, going through and trying out smaller and smaller mesh sizes until your stress result converges. But I'm going to show you another very nice tool here um, for setting this up. Um, <clears throat> without having to do all these manual refinements. And it's what we call adaptive meshing. So let me do this. Let me just delete the mesh control that's in there. And I'm going to run this again. This should be back to our original 163 and a half bad result in here. Really, really choppy mesh. And have a look at the mesh right now. So it looks like that. Yeah, it's pretty uniform over the whole part. Well, um, we go over all of this in our training. I don't have time to talk about all the details today, but we do have a tool called adaptive meshing in simulation. And this is actually going to look for error in the analysis, what we call a strain energy norm error. And it's going to automatically refine the mesh in those regions. So it's actually very easy to turn on. I'm just going to set my accuracy all the way up, turn on my maximum number of loops, and click OK. And what this will do, it will run the analysis right now, and then it's going to look at what we call an error plot for this. Um, and when it looks at the error, it's going to look at, at error between different elements in calculating strain. And where it sees high error, it's going to automatically refine the mesh. And then it's going to run again. But then it repeats the process. It looks for error, refines the mesh, runs again. And it does that up to five times. In fact, we can even go more than that if we want. But I'll show you what this does now. If I click Run, you'll see it says it's solving loops in here. And every time the stress is increasing a little bit, the contours are smoothing out a little bit. And that looks like a very smooth stress contour. Our maximum stress is up to about 186. Look what's happened to my mesh right now. If I show my mesh, it's automatically gone in to my high error regions where it needs refinement, and it's refined them. In other areas, like up here, when there's very low stress, it's actually coarsened the mesh just to take the element count down, uh, make it run a little bit faster. So I can run something like this. I can even have SolidWorks show me convergence plots and say, let's track my stress versus how it's changed here. And see, we started out about 165 jump up to 180, jump up to about 187, and now we're slowly coming down. This is going to hit an asymptote in here, guys. It'll be about 185, 186 MPA, final stress. And that's without all the manual mesh refinement you do yourself. So um, those are some of the advantages of full-blown simulation. Now, I'd also like to talk about a few other 
things. Um, what else do we have in the simulation product line? Because I just showed the basic static simulation, but we also have the ability to do a lot of other testing. This is the full simulation package, uh, package overview, guys. So everything I just showed you is all just static analysis, but we can do fatigue, we can do buckling, we can do thermal and heat transfer analysis, drop testing of parts, optimization, etc. We can even get into things like nonlinear and dynamic analysis, forced vibration, moving loads, moving parts as they go through, seismic simulations, um, shock response simulations, etc. The capabilities really are endless and we'd love to show you more of these tools. So it's just a quick example of that. I'll switch over to a dynamic analysis I have here. Um, this is actually a mock-up of the cockpit of an F-14 Tomcat. And what they do um, with a any jet, basically, uh, bird impacts can be a, a pretty big cause of failure and, and a significant impact. So uh, this is actually simulating a test that is actually run by the US military where they will basically fire a frozen chicken at a plane windshield and see how it behaves essentially, whether that would break the windshield, whether that's just going to bounce off the side, etc. Well, I'll show you some of the things we can do here. Uh, just let me, whoops, <laughs> I think I unplugged my portable hard drive that had the results on it. Just let me plug that in again and reload that. Well, you know what, I might have to open that up again, but I will, uh, I, I <laughs> that would have been a pretty neat one to show. Let me show you some other ones instead. So when we get into impact analysis, uh, we can do things like this. Guys, uh, nonlinear static analysis. So if you have nonlinear analysis where you have things that are actually sliding, moving contact patches, um, changing friction conditions, etc., we can handle that. But we can also handle impacts. If you want to get into parts impacting other parts, we can do it. Uh, we can measure basically how much those parts will deflect, how the stress and deflection change over time, and how long those vibrations or oscillations will take to actually damp out of the part. So it's not just static analysis. We have a wide, wide range of tools to help you. Now, that's the end of the overview on structural simulation. I know a little bit about that. Um, well, full-blown flow simulation can handle a lot more than the express tool. Um, we can handle multiple inlets and outlets. Uh, we can set those inlets and outlets by pressure, velocity, mass flow rate, volume flow rate, Mach number, etc. We also have a really nice tool called goals. And I'll talk a little bit about goals as we, we go. They're going to very quickly help you get the number you're looking for out of your analysis. And then, of course, we have way more capabilities than the Express tool. Pressure drops, density checks, um, streamline, um, uh, streamline plotting, cavitation prediction, etc. And I'd like to show you guys a little bit of that. So let me jump back into SolidWorks and I'm going to look at this part. And this is something we actually use in our flow simulation training course. Let me just make this a little bit transparent so you can see what's inside it. This is a catalytic converter assembly. Um, oops. Let me just quickly bring up some results here. Now, this is a catalytic converter assembly. And what we'll do, I'm actually going to pop that open again because I just had my geometry disappear on me. There we go. So we'll open it up again, and uh, what we have in this model is a catalytic converter assembly where we have two catalyst substrates in here. And uh, we could talk about porous media modeling and then things like that, but really I'd like to focus on pressure drops over this system. So we have these two big monolith blocks in here, and those are the actual catalysts that um, uh, the fluid will pass through, and those restrict the flow. Quite a bit. Now those can be very hard to model. We do have some porous media techniques we can use to model them and uh, without actually modeling the full porous material because you'd never be able to mesh something like that. But what I might be concerned about is the pressure drop over the system. So it's very easy to set up something called goals in flow simulation. And what these goals are, um, they're basically numeric values you're interested in. 
This might be a pressure at a certain location. It might be density at a location, velocity at a certain location, etc. Um, I'll just show you how you create these. If I want to say, let's say, find out the average velocity at this red lid that's in the middle of my structure here, well, I could go in and say, let's define a goal. I might do a surface goal here, and I'm going to choose this face of that lid. And I can now go in and ask SolidWorks to track any fluid parameter for me. Pressure, temperature, flow rate, velocity, um, etc. And I might, uh, what did I say I was, was looking for there? Velocity, average velocity. I could go in and set an average velocity goal right there. Um, and this does two things. Well, one, it's going to give me a number I can look at at the end of the, the analysis. It will say this is your average velocity. But the other thing is all of these goals are used in convergence. So, um, when you run an analysis, a steady state analysis, SolarWorks will actually continue running the analysis until all of your goals have stabilized. So, there's no worries about the analysis stopping while one goal is still changing or until the flow is fully converged. These are used as convergence goals. So, I've set up some interesting goals here. I, I said I was concerned about the pressure drop, and I'd like to know what the pressure drop is between my inlet and my midpoint right here, so the, the head pipe leading up to the catalysts. I'd also like to know the pressure drop between there and the outlet down here. So it's kind of pressure drop of the first section and the second section and the total pressure drop. Well, so what I've done, I've defined three goals. I've said, show me the average pressure at the inlet lid, at the midpoint lid, and at the outlet lid right there. But I've also designed what we call some equation goals. And what these are, these are just any goal you'd like to, to add with mathematical operators. So I've just said, give me the pressure drop over the first section, and that's my inlet pressure minus my mid pressure. Then I have another one that's my mid pressure minus my final pressure. That's going to give me my two pressure drops directly. But that's a really simple equation goal. If you wanted to, you could set up equation goals to do things like um, calculate a drag coefficient or a lift coefficient on a part. Calculate a um, just about any parameter, any equation-based parameter you can think of. So let's take a quick look at this. Now, um, I'm going to quickly show a cut plot in here. And this is what the velocity looks like inside the part right now. But you'll see I have a lot more control than I do in the Express Tools. Not only can I show these contours in here, but let's say I'd like to show um, vectors showing where the flow actually is or what direction the flow is actually going. I can do that. I can now visualize my flow direction, expansion through the catalysts, etc. What if I want to show streamlines? On this. Well, I could very easily show streamlines. These are neat because they're actually being live plotted by the graphics card, which kind of gives us infinite resolution on these. If I want just a, a rough idea, I can zoom out here and I can see I've got some recirculation happening in here, mostly uniform flow everywhere else. But if I need more detail, just zoom in and you're going to get more and more detail on those streamlines, separation, etc. So um, let's cancel that for a second. Now, with these, I can either take these cut plots and actually move them through the study manually. So I could grab these, uh, whoops, grab that little arrow there, and drag this all the way through. I can also animate it and just watch, basically. See how my flow changes as we go up to the top and the bottom of the assembly. I can set multiple cut plots, really anything I'd like to. Now, there are some other neat things I can do here. Um, instead of just showing velocity, I could very easily go in and, and show pressure or temperature, uh, etc. Now, how would I do that? You might think I have to make another plot for this, and, and I could. I could make a new cut plot, set it up to measure a different parameter in here, but there's actually an easier way. Let me cancel this. I just need to click on the color bar up here, and I can say, instead of velocity, show me pressure. Well. This is what the pressure looks like. I can see the pressure increases when we go around corners here, and the flow slows down and the pressure increases. Um, what if I want to look at fluid density? Instead, I could look at density changes in the fluid. They're pretty minimal in this case. I could look at vorticity. I could look at temperature, etc. Just about any parameter I'd like. Now, um, what about the pressure drops, like I mentioned? Well, that's where goal plots come in. 
I'm going to take my goals here and I'm going to say let's do a goal plot and I'd like to say show me all of my goals. Now I can either show those right in Flow Simulation or I can export those out to Excel which is what I'm going to do here. Get these open in Excel. Well here's the nice thing guys. This column here, column D, is all of my goal numbers. So I can very quickly see my inlet total pressure, my outlet total pressure, the midpoint total pressure, um, without any probing or, or needing to pull those results. It just gives me those. Now, I also have my two drops. The drop over the inlet pipe, well that's about 75 pascals. The drop over the catalytic converter, that's about 90 pascals in there. So, those two pressure drops directly calculated with almost no setup work. But the neat thing is, I can also see how all of these goals converge. So, if I wanted to look at my inlet pressure, well, this is actually what happened. As the analysis started up, it takes a while for the flow field to develop, but as that flow field develop, it develops, it very quickly hits a steady state flow. Same thing with the outlet pressure, a little bit of a different um, shape to that. We can see it has gone down, it has converged. Same with the midstream pressure. And then I can look at my drop conversion, uh, my, my pipe drop and my converter drop as well. So that's what we can do with um, full-blown flow simulation and goals. Now, let me show you a little bit more. What if I wanted to visualize the flow across this converter in here? Well, I could create what's called an XY plot. And this is just based on a sketch line. I'm not sure if you guys can see that little blue sketch line running across here. Well, I'd like to track velocity in my Z direction across that little part. So I'm going to export this to Excel. I'm actually doing this just before the converters and just after the converters. This is my velocity profile across the pipe. So, um, as it comes in, um, the first one's actually quite ununiform. Uh, if you guys remember, this negative velocity we see down here, well, that's due to the vorticity we see in here. If I edit that cup plot, again, I turn on my vectors, I can see we actually have some recirculation happening. Well, that negative flow is actually shown in my XY plot right there. By the time we get to the end of the second catalyst, we have a much more uniform flow, which is my blue profile here. I can see it goes down to zero at the walls, no slip boundary condition there, but we have a mostly developed flow in there. I can see my peak velocity is about two meters per second in there, etc. So those are some of the very nice tools you get with the full flow simulation package. And just like we did for um, simulation, I'm going to show you a quick overview of the flow simulation suite. So um, we mentioned internal and external flows. I've just shown you guys internal flows, but we can very, very quickly model not just internal, but external. If you're doing anything where wind load on a structure is important, um, you can very quickly uh, get that wind pressure out of it, uh, calculate lift coefficients, drag coefficients, etc. We have great modules for heat transfer. Um, if you're doing anything that involves fluids transferring heat, whether that's air cooling, fluid cooling, um, a thermal process that you're trying to simulate, we can help. And we have a lot of customers doing exactly this all across Canada. We can handle rotating components. Handle compressible fluids. Uh, if you're dealing with projectiles, shock wave formation, etc., Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids, and of course we can um, communicate with our structural software as well. We could go through and look at this water tower here with the wind loading on it. Well, our flow simulation won't do structural calculations, but it will go through and show me the pressure distribution, which you're seeing on the surface of the tower right now. Well, I can do a very quick one-click export into our structural software and say, take this wind pressure and let's do a structural analysis. Find out how much this will deform, um, how, what the stresses look like in the part, etc. So we do have that sort of one-way fluid structure interaction there. We can also do time dependent. It's not just steady state, but we can do transient studies as well. If you're interested in vortex shedding or flows that may change disturbances in the flow field, etc., we can handle that. And then finally, we have two modules specifically for the electronics cooling industry and the HVAC industry. Um, these are add-on modules to flow simulation, but I'd highly recommend you have a look at these if you're dealing with electronic cooling simulation or um, heating, ventilation, air conditioning 
type of analyses, we have some great tool sets specifically for you. Now, um, that is pretty much the end of the presentation, guys. Kind of talked about how um, structural simulation and flow simulation go beyond the express tools. And really, it's real simulation tools for your real designs. With um, full simulation, you get far better control, far better results, and we have all those different modules, buckling, optimization, nonlinear, et cetera. And the transparency of the mesh controls and then the result probing behind it means that you can understand your results more and actually stand behind the results you're getting. Flow simulation, well, we've seen some of the great things we can do, way more setup and result options. We have the ability to create goals and equation-based goals. We can deal with very complicated geometry here. We have mesh refinement tools that are, that are excellent in this, and the goals make it very easily to get the numeric values you're looking for. For now, so here's my contact information, my email address, and, and phone number. At Javelin, please feel free to uh, contact me anytime, guys, with your simulation questions. I love talking about this stuff. And again, there's no charge to, to call out and just talk to me. I'd, I'd be happy to see what you're doing right now. If you want me to double check an analysis or show you how we might set something up, give you a presentation on, on how simulation might benefit um, your designs, let me know. I'm happy to. All right, guys, well, we don't have any more questions coming in at this point, so we'll end the webinar. Thank you again for attending, guys, and I, I hope this two-part series on Express Tools was helpful for you. Um, if you haven't used the Express Tools, hopefully this will get you into the Express Tools and trying some sim. And if you're finding the Express Tools are limiting you, please let us know, um, because we do have full simulation capabilities that will meet your needs. So have a great afternoon, guys, and um, see, ya. see you next time.